man is Susan and some hair nineteen eighty, you know. Uncle has a big crown. Who knows you are? Now for us, you soon say, because you know you have a big room. Of course, I'm one of the chins of Peter's. I'm not disturbing quite too much. Say, a banner, I know. I say, I'm a boomerang. And I'm so moon and I'm quite in a quiet secondary forest. We go out, we are not an adjo. No, I'm a young man, I'm a young man. I never even could have you near the idea. Hmm, I'm only on boss. I'm not going to you near the idea. If you haven't had a legal working group, civil society and involvement in forest governance and all that, I'm sure by now our forest covers would have been gone. Majority would have been gone, either through illegal mining, surface mining, or through uh, illegal logging and all that. The participation of civil society in policy formulation and the sharpening of the uh, legal perspectives have been, has aided in the business of policy formulation and legal review. Uh, why must they withdraw now? I think it's, it's something that must continue. Chan <laughs> We have just wanted to call some me. We are just asking the idea. The answer now, I will go to the idea. See, see, first and only, sir. Never phone you. Have you heard? Never phone you. Have you been? See, see, I say. See, see, you tell me to a crack, crack, and you tell me to a. See, see, I have this and you tell me. I didn't try because of that thing. And here, I know. See, see, I'm not ready for a new idea. As a sign, crack. You have to be bossa. Last year, baby, do a year for me. See, a young boy, my even body, any in our crown, a day, be British. I didn't try. Mobu Bunu and Amma, as you say. What I know how Kaku, a quah, who knew? Send me do Ramu Kakrana, a quah, who be a case to see cra. Nina, I secondary forest, I said, canopy canopies are in Tayano Bosso direct. We are nowhere near where we want to be, uh, and by that I mean um, the effective protection of the resource. We still experience some fair amount of deforestation. We have had data to show what has been happening. We have seen some decline in uh, the pristine forest that we used to have. 2015 it was 1.4 million hectares. In 2019, uh, when we did our assessment, it had, it had come down to 1.27 million. And recently, 2021, it's, it's down to 1.20. That's a close for us. Specifically, over the last decade, we've worked to build the knowledge base of civil society actors working within the forest sector. The type of capacity building we give to these CSOs by empowering them with legal knowledge to enable them to have effective advocacy campaigns and to be able to hold state actors to be responsible in the management of uh, particularly forest resources. Being able to bring the law to the doorstep of CSOs, breaking it down and showing them how the law can aid them in their various advocacy um, drives has been an interesting journey for the last 10 years. For Planet Earth, what has been really satisfying is to see how 
civil society organizations have grown um, and how they've engaged in like very concretely in different law reform processes but also in different litigation cases. Our objective is really to see that civil society organizations have the space they deserve to have, that they are listened to and taken, um, taken seriously. But the work of Taylor Crab uh, together with the civil society groups has been very beneficial to us because if you take the voluntary partnership agreement for instance that we signed, government signed with the European Union which enjoins government to export only legally produced wood to the EU market and also sell same in the local market. We have made some very significant improvement and uh, progress in this direction because of the work of, of the Taylor Grab and their group. In a way, they have been a vehicle in streamlining what we have to do and also guide government as to what we have to do as, uh, in our laws. Um, you realize that not all the civil society groups are lawyers, but these people providing the legal brains to them to confront us on the legal issues is something that we see very positive. So there was a lot of illegal illegality going on in the sector and um, whatever goes with that was also was also happening until we started using the law to face them and telling them the issues that will come up the consequences and all that and fortunately flag vpa issue came up at that time also and uh, that is about legality and sustainability and it became the main vehicle for us to to use that the state of forest governance in Ghana was more like civil society throws measles at government, uh, government responds with, with, with lambasting and calling civil society names that we are, we are doing the bidding of our paymasters and all that. But now, almost 10, over 10, 15 years of doing a program that we call the Forest Law Enforcement Governance and Trade, the FLECT VPA process over, over the course of about 15 years. And I'm proud to say that through the Legal Working Group, we were part of uh, enacting the LI 2254, one of the most progressive forest-related laws in Africa, if you ask me. Oh, one unique thing about this legal working group is the fact that when they came, just like other sectors, they realized the gap in gender inclusion. So they tried to find out how could we enhance women empowerment and women involvement in the decision-making process so that women are not left out. So they brought in what we call the capacity building for women. So we have selected women that we train. And through that, they have really practicalized. It's not just about giving us the training. They've brought the women on board with all the cost implications. And there are instances when women are allowed to come to meetings with their babies. And so as a practitioner, whenever I'm also planning my meetings, I make sure women who have babies are not left out, are not disadvantaged. It has been 10 tremendous years of creating impact in forest governance in Ghana. Um, in the next 10 years, we intend to continue doing this good work, uh, building the capacity of civil society organizations, policy makers, local communities through legal training and capacity building. We also intend to continue working in the area of cocoa production and trade by supporting these same actors to um, contribute to meaningful decision making. Thirdly, we intend to increase the scope of our offerings to include carbon credits, emission reduction activities, mining, land tenure, uh, as well as just transitions.